Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't know I reached the big time now. I have my own show, the Tony <laughs> Saray Sports Talk. I said to Jim I would be glad to help him and host this show, and George and the group make it my own show. So delighted to be here. And when Jim mentioned the format and said that my two good friends, Joe Blandino and Robin Doplin, would be here representing uh, the athletic former athletic directors in the county, thought it would be a uh, – good opportunity for us to catch up because we haven't seen each other for a long time. We text back and forth and uh, keep in touch with each other. But uh, uh, we were adversaries for many years uh, as, uh, as, as well, these guys both played at Bridgeton and Vineland yeah. but, uh, uh, and coached there. And then uh, I brought Joe something, and we'll start with this, Robin. Go ahead. Because this is, this is humbling. I found this headline, compliments of Mike Cadimo, great sports writer. The Bulldog Bunch, nine in the fourth over the Bolts. I happen to be coaching against Joe Blandino. I don't know if they can see this picture at all. But uh, a, a youthful Joe Blandino, <laughs> 1984, humiliated the Millville Thunderbolts, coached by the host of the show, 13-1. to one, with nine runs in the fourth inning. Joe, do you remember humiliating us like that? That's yours. I don't ever want to see that again. <laughs> well, listen, I never really had the best of luck against Millville as a player as well, right? But uh, that's one of the few times, and uh, you know, and we deserved the headlines that day, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're right. Now, what, what year did you uh, – we were talking about this just before we started – well, that was 1984. When did you take over as athletic director? Uh, 85, and I stayed in the position till 2011. So I had 26 years as AD at Bridgeton. And how long did you coach baseball? Uh, well, I started with Johnny Bucalo as right, an assistant, right. which we had phenomenal teams back oh, in the 70s. Yep, you beat you us know. then, too, I remember. Uh, and, uh, I, and I took over that Johnny uh, head coach for about four years until the Board of Education wanted me to move up to be the athletic director. So it was like 80 to 84, give or take a few, uh, some time in between there. Yeah. Robin, when did you take over? Uh, 94. I went from 94 to 2007. A long run. <laughs> yeah. And we were talking a little bit earlier. I don't think any of us miss it. No, no. At the, you know, they <laughs> you say certain parts of it. Yeah, I'm they sure. say you'll, you'll know when it's time to retire. And um, I stayed one year extra, and that whole last year I said, it's time. You know, you just – I got tired. At, at, at When I first started, I loved the give and take with the parents and with the coaches. And at the end, I didn't like the give and take with the parents and the coaches. I'm sure you guys know exactly what I mean. Uh, it just became kind of tedious after a while. Well, there's so many more rules and regulations and, and that too. concerns that go on with, with uh, you know, the whole – you know, the whole gamut from the NJSIA and, and, and so forth. But um, I stepped in um, in 90, 96, um, my last year. Of, I coached that year and then became it was athletic director as well. And uh, these two guys were my mentors. And, um, you know, uh, Joe's advice. Remember your advice, Joe? You, you, still, re you still tell me that every now and then. When when, when Tony, we had we had an athletic directors meeting, right? And I get back to the school, and Tony called me up, right? And and, and he says, "What what do you, what do you tell, what can you tell me about this position I just got at Millville, right?" And I said, "Tony, I said you're a legend over there." I said, "But you're going to end up." putting out fires all the time, right? <laughs> so in regards to how much success he had over there, which he, everybody knows he's had, right? Being an athletic director was a whole different ball game. And, and what happened? It couldn't be a month or two later, he called me up. He says, you were absolutely right. All I've done was put out fires since I've been in this chair at the athletic director of Belleville. Not enough hoses, man, because they just keep coming one after the other. Yeah, we but, laugh, uh, you know. Hmm? We, we, we had some, uh, you know, great run together uh, uh, the years we served uh, in a capacity working working in the Cape Atlantic League. And, Robin, you were president for how many years? You remember? Jeez, it was like – I, I think it was six years. Six years. I think it was six years president, and I was six years on the um, NJSA executive, executive committee. committee. Um, and that's the part that um, – 
that uh, Joe, somebody's calling you. Yeah. I didn't know this was a call-in <laughs> show. <laughs> I told everybody it wasn't. <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> well, smile, smile more. <laughs> yeah. That's the part I miss. I, I miss the um, uh, the Cape Atlantic League meetings where we would get together and and set policy for um, you know basically all of South Jersey, um, you know from uh, Hamilton down. Um, and I miss the NJSIA uh, executive committee meetings um, where um, it seemed like I was always in an argument with somebody up there about <laughs> something, you know. It, somebody from wrestling wanted to do some, you know, the crazy things they wanted to do. I, at one time, they wanted to prevent anybody from having wrestling on championship weekend. And I said, wait a minute. I said, you're doing this because you think people from Vineland, Millville, Bridgeton are going to go up to Trenton to watch who knows who, you know, Perth Amboy wrestle somebody else. And, uh, oh, yeah, God, no, we're not. And and we got it overturned, you know, where, where you could wrestle. And it was really unfair to our kids, our wrestlers, because – those kids are wrestling, and the next week is the districts and regionals, and our kids weren't. And it just—it really wasn't fair to our kids. But that's the kind of thing I miss, you know, the give and take that I had up there. And trying to direct some policy, you know, with it. Yes. It's yeah. like moving mountains, but yeah, you know, it try, was trying to do that. But yeah. the run you had as as a president was was because uh, I served as your VP for a number of years. Uh, thank goodness, that's the greatest job in the world, Vice President. <laughs> Nobody, you know, puts any blame on us. See Robin when he comes back; he'll, <laughs> he'll solve that problem. But, uh, but, but no, it was it was it was an interesting time, and you guys all remember. There's so much change in that league, and we could spend the whole show on the football schedule. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go from you know, from there's... the Wildwoods, mm-hmm. you know, all the way up to the large schools, the Violins and the and the Millvilles, mm-hmm. and then trying to piece that together. That, that, that itself was a task, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, what people don't know is how many hours we used to spend developing a football schedule for the following year. Because, you know, you, you tried to please everybody, and you just couldn't. So somebody's going to come away mad. Um, and we would you – know, I remember being on a chalk – had um, – which we call Joni uh, Robinson oh, from Pleasantville. She was on a chalkboard writing for like an hour. Okay, how about if we do this? Okay, how about if we do that? And uh, that was a lot of work. But uh, eventually, we kind of got it right. Uh, there, but there was really no right answer, perfect right answer, I guess I should say, because you had the really small schools like Wildwood. We had you know problem with them, and then you had the parochial schools who were small in number, but. We're good in football. St. Joe. Yeah. Uh, so we're, what do you do with them? And they're playing Wildwood and winning every game 70 to nothing. Yeah, right. Doesn't do them any good or Wildwood and, any good. Uh, so it was just – it was really tough to try to come up with a football schedule. We spent a lot of time trying to do it. And, and we leave those meetings – Oh, anybody wanted Dan said a guy when he was eighty six. Give me a schedule. Yeah. Just give me a schedule. Yes. But people would leave there frustrated because they just cared about their schedule. Right. How do I come? I have to play Bridgeton twice in a row away or whatever. So it's a very difficult task. And um, serving on that scheduling committee, uh, you know, I know how hard that you know that task became. It's not as as easy as people think. I'm sorry, Joe, what were you going to say? No, I mean, getting back to football, I actually served on the NJSIA Advisory Committee. and For football? Uh, for football. Okay. And we, we won, we're the ones that brought up the 10th game at that time, or the consolation game, if you will, right? And some of my conversation discussion with the committee up there was, I'm all for it as long as you keep it geographic, Okay. So the funny story I'm going to tell you, which wasn't so funny back then, is the first year, right? Now we're group two, right? Our consolation game was Point Pleasant Borough, okay? What is near Bridgeton, isn't it? (laughs) Woodstown, who's also a group two, right, was 25 minutes away from them. They're playing Manasquan, both up there, right? So so I get on the phone and I says (laughs) – you guys got to be kidding me. We're both traveling two and a half miles, both side schools to play two and a half hours in, in Matasquan. When I specifically said when I was on a committee to keep it geographic, right? And well, we just thought you guys were a better matchup for point play. Than <laughs> that's, the, that's the explanation I got, right? But that just goes back to all that football stuff within the Cape Atlantic League, all the confusion, all the headaches. It was state all the way down to the local uh, leagues. You know, which I don't. I'm not sure if they got. I know they got the West Jersey League now, and I know that's. Yeah, yeah. That's I, the, I don't really know how well that's working out, but 
I'm glad I'm not involved. <laughs> well, that's not perfect either, but but at least football is one giant, you know, league. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I think because it's a giant league, Tony, uh, the fact that they, you know, if they go on your schedule for the past two years, and that's the way they schedule <coughs> against similar teams, which we really couldn't do in the Cape Atlantic. We didn't have enough teams. No, no, we had too much imbalance, so you couldn't do it. So I think for the most part it works out, but there's still imbalance. There's always, you know, concerns about – uh, I know talking to Dave Lagamba, the mobile athletic director, uh, there was a number there were a number of games that were scheduled that you know they didn't feel you know was it when Millville's best interest because we know as athletic directors you care about Bridgeton, I cared about Millville, you cared about Vineland. and you know that's that's our job that, to protect you know their interests. Uh, but I do think the West Jersey Football League um, is probably a good thing to overall to be able yeah. to you know, Get a schedule, make it somewhat fair, and I'll tell you, this battle by the beach that they established, oh, this is this is an unbelievable event. Uh, they're able to bring in teams from outside North Jersey. They run it. The city of Ocean City, of course, owns that field. They sponsor it and allow the teams to play, and it's become a tremendous. What what is event. Battle of the Beach, Tony? I, it, 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 are there are teams <clears throat> in the, in the. Uh, uh, West Jersey Football League. Uh, in fact, Clyde Folsom's one of the, I don't know what his title is, but he's involved with the scheduling, a retired football coach at West Efford. Uh, there are teams dying to get into this because it's a great event. They play games Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They I don't know the exact number, but it's like four Friday, four Saturday, and I think they reduced it to three maybe or two on, on Sunday. But everybody's you know, wanting to get in the game. It's kind of like the basketball battle by the bay where, right. you know, yeah. you have uh, really like, good teams that want to get in it. It's probably like the Joe Hartman uh, Diamond uh, Classic. Diamond, uh, similar to that where you right. get the best, yeah. try to get the, the best, best teams involved. Best, best team involved. And right. it's become, for that for the West Jersey Football League, a huge moneymaker. And I'm involved with the National Football Foundation, and – we were able to, we didn't know with COVID and lack of sponsorships, we give $500 to, we, we, we encompassed the Cape Atlantic League at that time, 24 schools. Well, now, we now do the entire West Jersey League, but they sponsored a lot of those scholarships by, by the funding that they got from that, that tournament. And right. that tournament's just going to gonna grow and get bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, Clyde said he's having a, a difficult time having to turn teams away. I think they have the schedule already. I don't know what it is for 22, but uh, it's, it's been a, a real boon. And, of course, Ocean City now with a turf field, although they got – I don't remember which day it was. I had a monsoon down there over the over, right. the, over the, that weekend, and it was like horrible. It was really flooded uh, badly. They had to move games. Or I know Mobile's game got pushed back several hours. It was you know it was postponed. But uh, but you know that that's one of the you know one of the difficulties of of you know athletic directors you know getting the football schedule. Right. So what what do you miss most? About not being here, the the interaction with the athletic directors. Yeah, that and um and so and the interaction with um I was talking to my wife the other night. Um, uh, we were passing uh, Ricky Pescatore. He's a local attorney in Ireland and, and uh, really good guy, really great family. His kids played uh, tennis. His son played uh, football and daughters played um, tennis. I said, mm -hmm. you know. I said, if all the parents were like the Pescatores, I think I might still be there. Well, that's a little bit of exaggeration, but that's the kind of families that um, yeah, you really that you enjoy. know that uh, that I really enjoyed having interaction with. And you know, I would have never met people like that if I was an yeah. athletic director. So yeah. I, that that's that's part, kind of the thing that I really really miss. Yeah. How about I, you, Joe? Uh, well. Besides going to the national convention with Robin and Paul every year, <laughs> I made it through four made, years. Yeah, yeah you always, you always disappeared, career. but we <laughs> that was that was well. We big, won't go there. That was big, big, big part of the fun of being an athletic director. But uh, I, I just, you know, the Bridgeton kids, uh, they're different kind of kids. You know what I mean? And they don't have a whole lot going for them at different times. And and myself and Kate Ballinger, you know, we just got together and we just uh, we provided everything for the Bridgeton kids as all the kids got in, in the influence schools. You know, what I mean, uh, generated a lot of money from the Bridgeton relays that we had our nice end of the year banquet from the money we made there and all like that. And uh, 
And back in that day, the British Board of Education was very generous because we were very blessed in having a lot of successful teams. So they were always there with the jackets and and things like that. And but we, uh, but you know what? They were those kids. You know, were very appreciative. You know, and uh, and just uh, what you know, what you got out of it. And, I, and I'll tell you a quick story. You know that. Uh, I'm, I'm having breakfast one morning at Angie's Diner, which is not existing anymore. And I'm at the end of the, of the, of the counter, and I asked the waitress for the bill. She gave me the uh, bill. She says, now, this is on that gentleman all the way at the other end of the counter, right? And I look like this, and I said, well, which guy is it? She says, it has to be the black guy all the way at the other end of the counter. I said, okay. So I went down there, and I shook his hand, and I thanked you for buying him breakfast. Didn't have any idea who he was. And he said to me, he says, you know what, Mr. Blaney, that's the least I could do for you. He says, because I remember everything you said when you were AD and coach and all that. And, uh, and he says, and I got two beautiful daughters. I got a great job in construction. And he says, and I owe a lot of that to you. That's <laughs> you nice. Know? That's and, a nice uh, and, and I walked out of there with a big smile on my face because we really do make a difference, yeah. you know, between teaching, yeah. coaching, and, and even being the athletic director that we were. And I never Absolutely. forgot that. It really made me feel good that he sure. did that, you know. And uh, that's I'll never forget that. No. It was just like no. something special. And you guys, I'm sure, have gotten similar. Well, you um, get to our age, <laughs> <laughs> and you've coached and taught and, 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 you know, been an administrator for so many teams, so many kids, so many families. And let's face it, Bridgeton, very nice little community, Moville, Vineland, and – so now we kind of go, of course, you're out of town all the time, and there's rich places, Sea Isle and Florida, but, you know, we get to walk around town a little bit and see some of those those former players, and you hear those stories, and it, it does make you feel good that, you know, that you had an impact, and, geez, you didn't even realize that, you know, that that had, that had occurred. Um, well, is, I is that what you miss, Tony? Mm -hmm. What, what, what do the, you miss most about the um, – oh, Yeah, the interaction, you know, with the uh, – you know, when I became – and I had, like, different careers. So when I was coaching, it was interaction with our coaches, football and baseball. And, you know, my guys, you guys know, they were with me forever. Oh, yeah. The whole time mm -hmm. I coached. So we were a really tight family. And then uh, and then the kids, that you, you know, you coach coming up. Then you become an athletic director and you kind of lose – a little bit with the kids because you're not, you know, you're not in the locker room anymore with them. Right. But you know what? You got a whole bunch of new friends and new people that you deal with. And I, you know, almost I can't, I really can't think of anybody that we dealt with that was really a bad person, you know, to work with at the AD meetings. I mean, they, I get there as a the new guy and you guys welcome me in and, you know, the other people are, are all very gracious and easy to work with. And, you know, so it's a whole other, you know, uh, a deal that, you, you know, you get down to those, those meetings, where, where was the uh, place that burned down on Mays Landing Road where we used to meet a couple of times? That Oh, I know, because I was... Caesars. Caesars. S yeah. Caesars. And I went there, and it was... The we would go there for a meeting, it's burned down, and we <laughs> yeah. went to the... I, 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 Joe got us at Mays Landing. Mays Landing, Landing. Country Club. I called that was Dougie, Joe. I called Dougie Frazier up. We were in the Mays Landing Country Club. Right? He said, Doug, I need a favor. I, I got 22 guys <laughs> out in the parking lot. Right? <laughs> And he said, what do you want me to do? I said, could we use your banquet room? And Right? And uh, that's how that will start. And they come yeah, up with coffee right. and donuts. That. And then we start yeah. having our breakfast there and, our, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and have our meeting That there. worked yeah. out very, very well. And that was yeah. always a great, you know, in addition to getting all the work done, it was a great social atmosphere. And then you guys that are great golfers might be able to hit a couple, <laughs> well, you know, right <laughs> afterwards, uh, as long as school was over. Now we went right back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a small break, and then uh, we'll be right back with Robin Daplin and Joe Blandino right after this. More than a century ago, General Tire was born right here in America. Since then, we've made a name for ourselves by making tires you can depend on. Tires built to handle any road this country can throw at them and relied on by every kind of driver. So you know that no matter where life takes you, with General Tire, anywhere is possible.
many tech decisions. At Complete Care, we are patients serving patients. I choose to bring myself and my children to Complete Care because we are a one-stop shop. We use dental, we use medical. I feel as though the quality of care here is great. I love working here. I feel great to work at a place that serves the community. There's a lot of people in need. To me, patients serving patients means we've been in your shoes. We know what great care means to us and we want to provide that for you. Back when I was there, that's for sure. Not even close. Okay, we're rock. Sports talk with Robin Daplin, Joe Blandino, and Tony Serace. So, Joe, you were just saying you put a total of 37 years in. Uh, so, w tell us a little bit about your career when you started at Bridgeton and then your evolution to be finally the athletic director and in retirement. Well, actually, I was the, the, the first elementary physical education teacher they ever had and I actually started the program wrote the curriculum and it was a trend back there where the school districts were trying to go with a phys ed teacher art teacher music teacher and a librarian to give elementary teachers a, a prep period which they never had before and in my case in phys ed it was a time when most classroom teachers would throw out the ball and they would play kickball every day when well, now all of a sudden here I come busting through the door and I'm what year 74, 1974, and now all of a sudden I'm doing exercises, I'm bearing pyramids, I'm doing Did you travel from I went school? To, I went to eight schools. Oh, cool, boy. Right? I had uh, 10 classes a day, right? 30 minutes of class. I, I, I ate my lunch in my car going to the next school, and I tell you what, that beat me up. <laughs> but I was young, and I was, I was able to handle it, but... Uh, but I was the first one, I wrote the curriculum, and it's nice to say that I did that for 11 years, and I was coaching football and baseball at the time at the high school. I coached with Bob Wayne, and I coached with Johnny Buccalo in baseball. And uh, and now I have to, I mean, and now if you look at the elementary phys ed program, each school has two or three phys ed teachers. They got a, a big formal program. But I was the pioneer to get that off the ground, you know. And then in 85, they came to me, uh, Johnny Buchler stepped away and wanted to know if I'd you know, be interested in being the AD. And at that time, I told him I wasn't because I really didn't think I was good enough, right? And the story behind that was Bob Sharp, who was the principal of the high school, if you guys remember him. Great man. Him and Sophie Amaranto mm -hmm. came down to Indian Avenue School when I was doing a little phys ed class. And Bob Sharp says, how come you haven't applied for the athletic director job? And I told him, I said, well, Mr. Sharp, I said, I don't think I was really ready for that or, or good enough to have that position. He says, get your application in, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's all I'm gonna tell you, right? So I put my application in and I don't know how, I don't know how many they had at that time, right? But I got the job and I kept it till uh, 2011 for 26 years, you know? And so the total was 37? 37, 37. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I, was ready to leave Robin at 37. So tell us about your career when you started, and we'll get back to Joe on his playing career. <laughs> uh, you uh, played at violin, right? I played at violin, yeah. You played basketball and I, track? Cross country, basketball, and track. I pole vault and track. Um, in fact, I held the pole vault record for a few years. And I came back and taught uh, special ed um, up till from 1972 to ooh, 86, I guess it was. Or, no, to 94, I'm sorry. And before that, for four years, I was, um, they called it faculty manager, which was assistant athletic director, basically, to Chalky Ottinger. Chalky moved up to principal, and I became athletic director. We all remember Chalky. Uh, what a great man. Uh, uh, Chalky was uh, a great guy. Was, yeah, great guy. He, uh, he got me to take the Sacred Heart job that one year. That's yeah. right. That's you were right. athletic director of yeah. Sacred Heart. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I think anybody that knew Chalky knew that 
You know, he yeah. was he was a really special was top shelf. special man. Sure. He was one of my best friends. Yeah, yeah. top shelf. Great guy. loss for yeah. certainly Violin, but oh, absolutely for all of Cumberland County and, and right. really known throughout the state. He was yeah. He was uh, he was just a, a very special yeah. special person. Um, so Joe, uh, you you went to school at Glassboro at the time, right? Right, and uh, health and phys ed major. Yes. And then, and then started the elementary program. I came to Millville, 1969. <clears throat> was um, Vince Hoke was the head football coach. Everybody I see in Bridgeton blames me for the 76 to six game, which I had no part of. Please remember that you Bridgeton people out there. Wait a minute, I'm from Violent. I don't know what you're talking about. 76 <laughs> oh, I, oh, to six. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> what? Millville beat Bridgeton in 1968. 76 to my, 6. My Ooh. senior year in high school. Oh, okay. Oh, so you remember no, vividly. I know very well. And Vince Oak was the head football coach and athletic director, and he was from my hometown in Harrisburg. I, I knew of him. I didn't know him real well. But Mike Dorr, who was uh, was here at the time, and, and I were good friends and played summer baseball together, said there was a job opening. So, you know, I came here, and uh, – Statute of limitations are gone, and all the board of eds gone, and superintendents. We got five since then, but back then they got. I don't know if they did it when you guys first started, but there really wasn't any strictness on certification. So people would get hired, and if you're a health and phys ed guy, Mike was teaching. He was a health and phys ed guy. Was teaching English, and <laughs> so I did. I had no idea what I was going to teach. I was going to coach football. So in August. One of the phys ed people, uh, I hadn't even met the guy yet. He left, and that opened a phys ed job. I thought Mike was going to get it, and I was going to go to English. <laughs> Thank God for those English students, because I uh, I was able to get the you know the, the phys ed job, and uh, you know taught in the phys ed department with my good friend Ed Salmon for 25 years, and um, we started Ed started actually uh, elementary phys ed Joe at the same time. Oh yeah, our Joe Durella. Christy Thompson, mm -hmm. and Ed got that through CETA funds, and they started the elementary uh, phys ed program, and then and Ed had told them, you do a great job, you'll get hired full time, because mm -hmm. the, state, the kids and the community will want you. That's exactly what happened. And now, of course, like you said, it blossomed into, you know, something better. By the way, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. You mentioned um, Rick Pescatore's daughter playing tennis. Of course, I'm sure that all of her abilities were enhanced by Harry Silverstein. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> See, oh, Harry paid me $10 to say yeah, that. Uh -huh. And to say that he's the winningest coach ever in the history of mankind. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, Harry. <laughs> oh, gee. <geez>. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Can we talk about your baseball career? <laughs> well, you know, I got, I got in 1972, I got the head football job. And I was just telling uh, one of the candidates for the mobile job had called me. And uh, I said, listen, when I got the, the football job, I was 24 years old. I had coached three years. And I had no clue, but except that I wanted to be a head football coach someday. But I really thought I'd be starting at a small school, not at a group four school with a great tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was blessed because Bobby Hogan, Eddie Andrews, Paul McCluskey, those guys were all part of the staff that, you know, that we started with and, uh, you know, carried me along. And a year later, Mike Dorr left. He was a head baseball coach. I was the assistant. And my other love was baseball, so then I became the head baseball coach. And really, I think it was at that time that I thought I was going to get a divorce, but my wife just said, see ya. <laughs> so, you know, you're doing football and baseball for – 21 years. You know, I, yeah. I, I, did, I wasn't home very often. So when I talked to her, and I said, I'm, I got a chance to be athletic director. I'm going to put in for that job. I said, I'll be home a lot more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As you well know, boys, no. that was not the case. No. She said, no. what happened to being home more? Now you got 24 sports you got. You gotta be at, and you're and you're and you're always around. And you guys can talk about this. You talk about Kay and people that that, that assisted you. But uh, I was with Wayne today. Wayne Engling was my assistant AD the whole time I was there. Uh, I, I think Dave did it. Wayne retired a year before I did, so Dave Lagamba was uh, my assistant. But Wayne was with me almost the entire time, and you guys both know him. Great guy, uh, you know, absolutely. Really, 
really fit in well for a violent guy. He's a violent he guy. Bed, mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, blessed to have, you know, have Wayne, and, and we really worked well together. So, but, Joe I think told, his, but I think his wife's from Bridgeton now, right? I know. <laughs> Mary Ann, that's a good question. She might be. Well, he comes, oh, I know he comes is, to Fry Tag Funeral Home a lot to well, see people. Well, he's got a lot of friends. Okay. But mm-hmm. she might be, but I know this. Don't say anything bad about Wayne, because here his wife are related to everyone in Cumberland County. <laughs> oh, so okay, okay. That's why he's there. <laughs> that's Talk just, a little bit about Kate Ballinger, because I know she was a, a big help to you. Ah, well, Kay uh, took over for Sophie, you know, uh, when she retired, and she stayed pretty much the whole length of time with me till. I took over by myself about the last six years of my career, but Kay, uh, Kay coached, she coached field hockey, she coached softball, she coached tennis. I mean, she's very successful in everything that she did, you know. And to tell you a little bit of personally about Kay Bounder, we grew in the sa- up in the same neighborhood, four, <laughs> four houses apart, okay? And we always played down at Indian Avenue School in the summertime, and she used to run the playground that used to have back then, right? But every time we picked teams up to play a baseball game, Kay was always the first pick. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the guys, it was only Kay because she was better than everybody else, you know. But uh, she's doing real well. She's been living in Florida and yeah. Mary Beach, and she does well. She, during my time when I was sick a little bit, she gave me a lot of phone calls and kept up with me and checked in on me. But she's very, uh, sp- a really special person. Yeah, talking about the articles that Mike Kadimo wrote, uh, and I was going through them and sorting them out, you know, Bridgeton articles and Millville articles. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there were several articles in there that, Kay, you know, with Kay coaching. And, uh, yeah, she was, uh, you know, she was the female Joe Blandino <laughs> legend over in, uh, in in Bridgeton. How about you, Robin? Anybody helping you? You do it all on your own. Well, no, you know, it, it was interesting you said when you became football coach, you know, you didn't know what was going on. Well, when I became head basketball coach, I had taught for one year. And I went out to the um, national convention, teachers convention, and I was driving, driving back. And at that time, I had, a, I had just put my name in for basketball coach. I said, to any position available. Well, I call home, hey, Dad, what's up? He goes, you just got named head basketball coach. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> so I came home. I said, how the heck did this happen? You know, I, I had no experience coaching basketball on any level, really. And uh, they said, well, there was a faction on the board that wanted this guy, and there was another faction that wanted this guy, so they compromised and picked you. <laughs> so, but I was fortunate that I had um, Eddie Harvard as an yeah, assistant yeah. coach and uh, Charlie Sheftall. And, um, and we wound up with – actually, we, our first year, we had the best record of violent basketball ever had. Uh, we were 19-5 and five that year, and a lot of it's beca- – I mean – What were the years, Robin? Um, this was – uh, I believe seventy three, seventy four. Okay, and um, I, like I said, if it wasn't for those guys helping me out, because I came in like you, you know, what, <laughs> what do I know? But you know what, um, it, it worked out. And when you have good assistants, and I had good kids. I had Reed Nelson, I had Ricky Bruffy, Mark right. Richards, Alex Williams, a bunch of those kids. Yeah, I remember. I remember and, those, um, those players. They were know, good. There was uh, yeah, Ricky was the leader of that group. Ricky Bruffy, and uh, that was that was a lot of fun that year. Now, did you have any help as athletic director, as site manager? Or? Yeah, I had uh, Rick Gazier. Okay. He was uh, right. he was he was my faculty manager, which is basically like assistant athletic director. And he was good. Uh, he took care of um, uh, he took care of all the ticket sales and things like that. So it uh, made my job a lot easier. Yeah, I know. Stepping in as AD, you know, I had my little fiefdom of football that I worried about. But now you've got all these other things, and as Joe said you know, to me, you know, you're putting out fires all the time. Well, I don't think you know people realize. I didn't realize really all the uh, components that go into being an athletic director and mm-hmm. all the events, and you have to be, you have to have an administrator at every event right. to supervise it in case something goes on, and. You know, you're constantly, you know, uh, uh, time management becomes very important to try to be at all those events and juggle some of the things you're doing. You're on the NJSIA committee, you're on the Cape Atlantic League president and all the other things that you're trying to do uh, that you have to do. And then you're trying to get to your events. You know, it was an eye opener for me, Tony, was um, uh, girls sports, women's sports. Um, I had never, I, I don't know if I had 
been to any you know, women's sports, a, a girls' basketball game, a girls' softball, girls' tennis. And like you said, you had the administrator, you had to be at those things. And I just loved it. I loved watching girls' softball, girls' tennis. Um, that To me, they were just really – something I had never experienced before. And, and it, was all, it was all about guys. You know, I was a basketball guy. I was a track guy. I and, echo uh, that 100%. That, that is exactly and, – and if you say – and I didn't think of this when we were talking about it, but if you said, you know, what did you – get out of it, uh, be an athletic director, I agree with you. That is exactly what I got out of it because my whole life was with boys, was with football, was with baseball. And, you know, I might attend a, uh, on a way off the practice field, watch the field hockey team when they're playing violin or something, but really wasn't there. So now you're at the event, you're, fi- you're, you're meeting these young ladies and learning about the coaches that put, you know, I thought like, oh man, football does all the work, but no, these these people put in a lot of oh, work yes. and a lot of time and a lot of effort, and that was all new to me as well. And I enjoyed that part of it immensely. That's a great point. Yeah, I got a little bit of that like later on because Kay, always, oh, Kay yeah. was always at the girls' events, right. and I didn't have to worry about. So what you're that. saying, Joe, is you did half the work. That I, did, I, I did half the work, <laughs> right? But but when Kay retired and I took over everything and had to be at everything, and I I I agree, I got an appreciation of girls' sports and girls athletics and we had phenomenal athletic girls at our school oh absolutely time. listen just yeah. take the wilkes girls <laughs> oh yeah well the wilkes family the I wilkes mean, family i mean they, they put us on the map for a yeah, long time yeah you know? no, absolutely it's uh, uh and it's phenomenal too how, how girl sports has exploded you know we started lacrosse when i was athletic director and we just had 400 girls go out for softball well they can't all be on the team so once we started lacrosse a lot of those girls their athleticism was able to be used in, you know, in lacrosse. And I know you guys started uh, a boys lacrosse. And, right. And, um, you know, so it's it's expanding. And the problem, like we have in Millville, I know we're, we're landlocked. And by the way, I don't know what you if had to do with it or anything you had to do with it, but that facility, to, I guess it's Tony Datoma. Right, right. Um, field, that, that is gorgeous over there, yeah. Robin. I broadcast yeah. two games over there, baseball games. Uh, that, that's tremendous facility. Yeah, Chalky and I fought hard for that. Um, you know, uh, I can't take uh, credit for it. I, uh, well, I could take some credit, but uh, Chalky and I fought hard for that, real hard. And um, there were some real bumps in the road building it. Um, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, Well, what a it, great baseball it, field. It, 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 is, it, it did turn out really, really nice. Yeah, compared to, you know, where you were playing right off Chestnut oh, yeah. Avenue. Right, right. Yeah, that was like could, a sandlot field. Could I, could I tell you a Tony DeTomo story? <laughs> of course. Yeah. There's, there's only a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's my first athletic director's meeting I go to. And I'm, I'm very intimidated, right? Well, it was Tony DeTomo and Art Martinelli and, and Harry Ackerman. Uh, Tony Galupo and, and all that. So I get back to my office and my phone rings. It's Tony DeTomo. He said, hey, boy. Right? I says, yo, Tony. I said, what's up? He says, do you notice how many ath- athletic directors are Italians on the Cape Atlantic League? <laughs> I says, matter of fact, I did. Right? He says, just want to remind me how you need to vote next time. Because <laughs> <laughs> right? we all stick together. <laughs> I'll never forget uh, that. You know? no, oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. You know, Joe, you say that, but we did have to stick together. Not Italians. I'm not Italian. Okay. <laughs> But sometimes against the Atlanta County schools, mm-hmm. you know, we would tell our coaches, hey, watch out when you go down to all-star voting. Mm-hmm. You know, you might want to stick with Millville and Bridgeton mm-hmm. on this, you know, when uh, during the vote. Because I swear they ganged up on us a lot of times. Oh, they did. And it was just the three of us, you know, yeah. three schools. Yeah. We're going to have to take another uh, short break, and we'll be back right after this with Robin Daplin and Joe Blandino. Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community. 
local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. I chose the Marco Luisi Funeral Home because they treated me with respect and compassion. I couldn't have gone through all this if I didn't have the Marco Luisi by my side. They did everything that they could to make me happy. And that was important to me and my kids. At the DeMarco Luisi Funeral Home, we're here for you and your family in your time of need. Welcome back to Sports Talk. I like kind of like that, although this is my yearly visit. Don't, <laughs> don't get accustomed to this, Jim Quinn. <laughs> Happy to have Robin Daplin and Joe Blandino here, uh, uh, longtime friends and adversaries, as we would battle through some uh, some games. Had a few few battles in football on the uh, on the field that you and I had to. Yeah, uh, monitor. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> back had, in the day, had but the big rumble the, the one year, <laughs> and um, I'd never forget. You came in. Chalky and I were in my office the next day, um, and the day after Thanksgiving, and um, and we're looking at film. We're going, oh, we got to do this, and then you come walking in with a white flag. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, speaking of that, um, you know, I, I wanted to bring up uh, John Parentazzi. Um, today and the relationship that you had with John and you can talk about it a little bit but um, I know before you two um, got together as head football coaches were I mean Violent and Millville it was a lot of animosity okay um, you know it wasn't a friendly rivalry it was a rivalry that times you know spilled over well like it did um, that day but hatred. that that was an anomaly hatred. that that day yeah there was but um, you and John Parentazzi got together and taught both Violin and Millville, in my opinion, um, that it can be a rivalry. It doesn't have to be hatred, and it be, can be friendly. And you and John became very good friends. Um, I'll let you expand on that. And uh, my hat's off to you and to John. May he rest in peace. Well, as you know, one of my dearest friends, we go way, way back – before John became the head coach, and you know, I don't know, two Italians or whatever, we we just got along well, and and uh, you know, we coached together in all star games. We went to football camps together at Penn State. John never drove, by the way, so um, but but we just became great great friends. And then when John got that, you know, the head job, uh, you know, you, there's nobody you want to beat more than your brother, right, or more than exactly. your friend, but. You certainly didn't want it to be, you know, like a fist fight or something, or a, more, more importantly, allow the kids to have that spill over. So John's teams, by and large, you know, at least from what I remember, right, they were well disciplined Absolutely. all the time. No, no baloney, no taunting, none of that stuff. John wouldn't put up with it, and so, you know, we we we'd, we'd hug before the game and we'd say, "You're gonna kick your butt," <laughs> and then. <laughs> We go back to our sidelines and argue with the officials and fight and try to win. And then when it was over, there was a big hug. And then after the game, it was a it was a race to see who was going to call who first. <laughs> and you know, you were either getting consoled or you're yeah. you know, but you you certainly weren't you know gloating over beating a friend. But you were you know thrilled to win the game, obviously. 
uh, you said rest in peace, John. Uh, you lose a friend like that, it's 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 really hard. And uh, I miss his phone calls and his, you know, hey coach, hey coach, you got a phone number for me? <laughs> but, John, I've given it to you six times. <laughs> Yeah, I tell Love you, yeah, you know, to follow up on that, I mean, I'm working in my yard one day, and my phone rings. This is during the COVID, when everybody, everything was shut down. It was John. Hey, Joey, it's Johnny Parentazzi. <laughs> say, hey, John, how are you? I said, everything okay? I just wanted to call and see how you were. I haven't talked to you in so long. I, I was so taken back at that, you know, because it's been quite a while. I mean, we went to breakfast that one time. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, we took. Yeah, 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 that was great. That was, yeah, that that was great. great. Yep. And uh, but for him to take the time out just to give me a call, I mean, I. So after that happened, I actually ended up calling him a couple of times. You know, when he was started to uh, go downhill, go downhill a little yeah. bit. But what a great guy! He was always he was very instrumental in the um, basketball officials too, mm -hmm. and um, I think really helped um, settle down a lot of the athletic directors and coaches where he would come to meetings and say, okay, here's what we're trying to do. And, um, and because uh, well, basketball coaches, as I, I was one, <laughs> and officials do not get along real well most of the time. But he just gave us an understanding of what you know, they were trying to do. And look, if after a game you can call us, let us know, you know if there's a problem. And, uh, and he was a really good official. He really was. I mean, right. he had, I think in basketball, you have to have a really sixth sense – anticipation yeah. and 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 yet if it was a little volatile he'd just slide over and say coach calm down now calm down yeah you know handled it so that he didn't want to tee the guy up or, right. or have something escalate really good i, he I knew was, that because i that, yeah i mean he did that with the kids on the floor i thought i was just going to say that right joe you know, that's that? right yes that's i mean point. if there was a, a questionable call Yep. He'll take his yep. time. He'll go over to the kid. He'll put his arm around the kid. Yep. Yep. Talk to the kid a little bit. Now the kids all calm down. Yep. And they restarted the game. He did that several times in my gym. Yeah. You know? so, hey, 22, get your hands off him. You know, instead of calling the foul, give you a warning first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he was the best. So here's a, here, here's a great John Parentazzi story. Got to share this. 1972, I think, or something more 72. JV basketball coach. A football coach doing JV basketball. You're the JV basketball. I'm the coach. JV basketball. And John's well, at Vineland. I'd have liked to have seen that. John's at Vineland, JV okay. coach. So, Whitey Hake, you remember Whitey? Oh, yeah. Whitey comes down and he says, We just got a transfer in. He's going to play for JVs tonight. So I look in the doorway, there's a six foot nine kid who came in from. <laughs> Middle Township. Alan True story. Shaw. Alan Shaw. No, <laughs> reincarnated. <laughs> True story. I said, well, what's your name? Smackwater Williams. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> what's your real name? I go by Smackwater. <laughs> so this young man, I don't think he's listening. <laughs> he came from Middle Township. He wasn't eligible yet, whatever. I don't know why. He said, you can play him in the JV game. We're playing violent. <laughs> so <laughs> line up with four munchkins and his six nine <laughs> you couldn't dunk back then mm -hmm. games back and forth end of the game this kid dribbles a left of the court boom he throws it down john's on the buzzer goes off john's on the court screaming at the official <laughs> you can't do that i get our kids off the floor into the locker room at mobile you know where that locker room is John comes busting through the door. He says, I want to see you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John and I laughed about Smackwater Williams. Oh, oh my goodness. What a, what a character he was, John. Uh, yeah. But he was a great official. And, and, and uh, the tournament in Wildwood, uh, you know, they have a, 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 one of those – one of the – The Christmas tournament. Christmas tournament right. that they hold in Wildwood. One of the – tournament games or whatever they call it named after That's john right. yeah. uh, tom williams has uh awards named after john so he is very well respected in that in, in the entire basketball community mm -hmm. and, and rightfully so so Absolutely. we send out our our best wishes to his lovely wife bunny and and uh you know we miss we miss john yeah we miss him no, yep, no for doubt sure, for sure mm -hmm. So as we uh, as we get to uh, toward the end here a little bit, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, say. And I don't want to get into too much detail, Joe. I'll let you get into it. But we are all thrilled that you went through a serious health condition, and many of us had reached out, prayed for you, and man, you look great. 
Well, thank you, and I'll tell you why. You don't know how excited I was to see you guys tonight, you know, only because there was a one time where I didn't know if I'd see anybody. But uh, I feel very blessed. Uh, God answered a lot of prayers of people that were praying for me. He's given me a second chance. I got a lot of my weight back. I lost about 30 pounds, but I went through a, a very difficult and scary time for a while, for not only for myself, but for my friends and family. And, and your wife was a saint, man, because saints. not only taking care of you, but she let all of us know, yeah, you, know, she what kept you, us. you know what what was going yes. on, so we had an idea. Yeah, listen, she, she saved my life. She got me in a better situation immediately. Uh, the surgeon at Jefferson said if I waited another 24 hours, I wouldn't be here. They did an emergency surgery on me. I was in a coma for a while. I spent six weeks at Jefferson, and and uh, and thank God here I am. And I'm very lucky, and I feel very blessed. And and I was worried I'd never see my grandkids. Now we're all grandpops now. Yeah. You know what I mean? All yeah. of us now, and they're a big part of my life, just like they are you guys. And that hits home, boy. You when you, you go through a tragic and, thing yeah. like that, but. But uh, you know, it started the first week in November, and I got I had I had the bag on and things like that. I mean, I don't want to get into the whole the medical part of it, but the bottom line is is uh, God's given me a second chance, and I hope I can fully take advantage of it and stay healthy and enjoy my friends and my family and my and the rest of my life. Sure, whatever I have sure. left. You know? Well, and talk about this real quickly with both of you. So, what what are your uh, your son? And uh, to, what's your family? I can't remember. I got that. a daughter. No, I got a daughter. daughter. I got a daughter, Julie, who's uh, who's the head of the senior center up in Glassboro. Okay. Okay. And my son Joey, who's uh, in uh, public works in Glassboro, and he's actually he's head of the recreation department up there. Uh -huh. it seems like it just fall, falls down from my dad to me to, to him. You know, I got four grandkids. My daughter's got uh, <coughs> uh, two. Uh, uh, Mikey in uh, Brooklyn. Joey's got Jason, Lena, you know, and then I got I got Kim's two kids, uh, Troy and Kelsey. You know, Kelsey just you graduated. just graduated Villanova. Villanova. Awesome. Great speech by Jay Ray. It was oh, what, I I mean, what, what an atmosphere. Oh, what an atmosphere was that. It was very exciting and impressive, and you know, everybody's doing well. Kim's doing well. She's got a few more years to teach, you know. Is, is, and uh, hopefully she'll retire soon where we'll, we'll be able to spend a little bit more time doing things. But in the meantime, I'm working for Fry Tags, Kenny Fry Tag. He's busy. <laughs> you know, and it's a nice little sideline. And uh, and you meet we, a lot of people that, you know. Well, you know, we talk families. about the two people that we touched, you know. And one of the reasons why Kenny even hired me to be the greeter, he says, you're a Blandino, you know everybody. Absolutely. <laughs> he says, I, I could put anybody as a greeter. All that you were spent 37 years at that school, they're all going to come in here one time or another. And uh, besides, you went to school with your hometown guy, and I don't want to put just anybody as a greeter because I really want you to do it. And that's what I'm and I've been here for about five years now. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been great. Mm -hmm. Kenny, Kenny was a big supporter, as you know, of the Bridgeton Stadium mm -hmm. uh, project. So, yeah. great, great man. Right, great man, great family. Mm -hmm. So, Robin, tell us about uh, your your one daughter's teaching, right? Or are they both? Uh, they're both assistant principals now. My youngest oh my daughter, yeah, the time goes. my youngest daughter assistant Carly, principal. she's assistant principal at Manny's, and my oldest daughter Caitlin, assistant uh, principal at um, CC Tech, which is an unbelievable school. I don't oh, know if yeah. you've uh, if you've been. It's, yes, it's yeah, it's it. not your father's technical school. No, no, I mean, it's, it's not just, our old Votac. That no, we, no, it's you know, uh, shop class. Over there. Yeah. Shop yeah. class right? yeah, 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 no, it's yeah, uh, no, it's just unbelievable, and um, they're both very happy in their positions. And my oldest well, daughter great. has uh, two grandchildren, um, uh, Madeline at seven, and uh, Max at two. But I have a problem, Tony. Maybe you can help me with. She lives in Port Elizabeth. That means that my granddaughter, she's playing soccer now, Millville Get that soccer. orange and blue, baby. I and, can't wait to and see she's gonna, and orange and she's gonna, blue. She's going to play well, for Millville. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Robert, my grandson plays for Millville Lightning. Uh -huh. Right? And, and a great program. Vic, you love it. Yeah. Vic, Vic Gilson's grandson, you know, Vic from Bridgeton plays uh, plays over in Millville. Well, you know, like we stole Engling and Vinick from you, although, <laughs> you, you know, you can have them back anytime you want. But, uh, they're, they're great friends. <laughs> uh, Vinick and Harry have this battle going on. Who has the most victories? Oh, so jeez. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for, for that final count to come in. But, uh, yeah. Now, now uh, you have a grandson 
that's um, a heck of a football player. Oh, boy. Oh, I do. Let's uh, hear about that a little AJ, bit. Is it AJ? AJ, yeah. 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 He's on he, Facebook a he's lot. He's actually right? going to the uh, – well, you know what you do when you're a grandfather who gives a – about – Bragging about him, man. I mean, go ahead. you know, they they go to the potty. Say, hey, man, just went to the potty first time, <laughs> two years old. But but no, AJ, you know, he's uh, he's Bob's son. Um, uh, let me Bob, let me who see, coaches Princeton, who coaches at Princeton, and you know, the kid like Bob did grew up around football, so he's been at you know camps at Princeton, and you know, ever since he was little. Um, and let me tell you, it's kind of like a little bit of a Mike Trout growth spurt because uh, I. Went and saw him play in eighth grade, and he's like a typical eighth grader. I don't know, five five, you know, one hundred and twenty pounds. I don't, know, you know, one very big, and he, you know, was a quarterback for their team. And then, you know, I'd gotten cancer. I was out of commission in COVID. I got two years later. He's six two, one ninety five. What happened? You know, I Facetime him, but he couldn't really see. You know, his growth spurt. He is going Sunday to the Elite Eleven. Uh, which is a really exclusive quarterback camp that you're invited to. Uh, And he's had about 12 or 15 offers. And now some of the real big ones, uh, like Notre Dame and Michigan, uh, not that Michigan State isn't big. I guess, you know, Michigan State wouldn't be happy if I said that. They've offered him already. But some of these other schools want to see him in camp. So we'll see. He's only a sophomore. Wow. And, you know, so that's what they do now, though. They yeah. recruit these kids. You know, they want to know. They want the commitments. But you have they, to be so proud of him. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And, he's a, and he's a good kid. Well, they, knew the, they knew the genes. Well, yeah. listen, <laughs> people say, quarterback? I said, mother's genes. <laughs> she was a great soccer player. Bad, she played them all. She right. was a great – you know, my boys were like me, line, dumb linemen. But, uh, and my granddaughter, his uh, – my oldest uh, granddaughter, is going to Columbia to play lacrosse. So we're excited about her. I saw saw a double hunter yesterday. I saw her play lacrosse, and AJ played baseball. And um, and then Brian, who moved out of town, has two little ones, uh, nine and seven. So you know it's fun, isn't it? You Keep know, you fun busy watching yeah, it them. Keeps us busy. You know, we don't That's get up sure. there as often as you know we'd like, but you know it's all fun. Yeah. So with that, I want to thank both Robin and Joe for stepping in. This has been fun. We. Uh, catch up and it was great to see both of you it's been a long time since we saw each other in person with all the craziness going on but i want to thank quinn broadcasting george thank you and uh with that we're going to wrap up the first and probably only edition of tony serace's sports (laughs) talk good evening everybody this has been a qbc television production in association with our partners and sponsors QBC broadcasts on Comcast Cable Channel 22, and live streams its programming on Facebook and YouTube. All rights reserved by Quinn Media and QBC, programming that serves the South Jersey market.